Italy has so many beautiful towns, it's hard to pick among them and rank the best. But very often, Bellagio sits on top of that list. Located in the Lake District in the north of Italy on Lake Como, it is one of the world's most beautiful destinations that you would really enjoy visiting. The poet Shelley called it the loveliest town in the world, and Mark Twain described it as a beauty out of heaven itself. It is a picturesque wonderland, most famous for its staircase streets. And they lead up to an upper level shopping street, so you can go up, across, back down again, just wander at will. It's a little bit of effort, but the steps are pretty shallow. Quite easy to climb these steps. You'll find many scenic places for those all-important selfies. It's a small village, just 200 meters from one end to the other, but within that area, there are many little lanes to go wandering on. Bellagio is considered one of the most picturesque places in Italy, often referred to as the Pearl of Lake Como due to its stunning natural beauty and charming atmosphere. The old town is characterized by narrow streets and picturesque winding alleys, most of them staircases lined with charming shops, cafes, and restaurants. It's a great place to wander and explore. The town's layout is reminiscent of a typical medieval village with steep and irregularly shaped streets that climb up the hillside with rounded cobblestone paving that is quite easy to walk on. The Bellagio waterfront promenade offers stunning views of Lake Como and is lined with more of these charming shops, hotels, and restaurants. There are these lovely cafes along the arcades of Bellagio. You want to sit down and have a snack, maybe have lunch right here. Great place to take a break. Adding to the allure of Bellagio town is this scenic location along the shores of Lake Como, surrounded by mountains. You can get here by a boat, and the boat can take you to other villages around the lake as well, but certainly you want to spend a lot of time here in Bellagio. The lakefront promenade through these porticos is one of the most important streets with many shops and restaurants. If Bellagio was only another typical Italian town with a pedestrian zone with pretty pastel-colored buildings and a flat terrain, it would be just another picturesque village. However, with the staircase lanes going up the hill, it makes it something very special, magical, unique. You do have to put in a little effort to climb those steps, but it's easy. If you cannot climb, there are some streets that will take you gradually around to the top. On the map, we see the two main streets, one along the waterfront and a parallel street inland. We'll walk along them during the program, but for now, a quick preview. The porticos along the waterfront and the upper lane, Garibaldi, the main street of town. These two lanes are connected by nine pedestrian lanes that are mostly staircases. Salita Serbaloni is the busiest and most picturesque. So if you only have time or energy for one staircase, make it this one. And there are two more of the main staircase streets, Salita Mela and Monastero, both of them quite lovely to walk on. That's five main lanes altogether. So if you don't have enough time in your visit to see everything, focus on those main streets. However, you'll find that all of those lanes are a lot of fun to walk on. If you cannot handle staircases, then take Via Roma for a more gentle route that will bring you up the hill. And then you could easily walk down one of those scenic staircases. These winding hillside lanes are so beautiful, you would probably enjoy walking every bit of them with a complete route covering about two kilometers. And the hill is not very steep. However, to take full advantage of your visit, I suggest that you walk each of those major lanes round trip. Yes, back and forth, uphill and downhill. 
That way you'll have twice as much fun and after all the sights that you'll find along a street always look a little different when you return back in the opposite direction, making it a round trip. If you walk back and forth on each staircase, it doubles your distance to four kilometers or two and a half miles, which means you could see all of town in about two hours in this wonderfully complete route. In that way, you are getting the most out of this opportunity to explore such a magical place. Of course, you'll want to add in some more time for popping into the shops and having snacks and then maybe having lunch. So you can look forward to a wonderful half day at least to discover Bellagio. We are now walking along that upper lane via Garibaldi with those staircases coming up to it from down by the lakeshore. And this street is really the longest and most important commercial street in town. It has the most shops and restaurants. And it's quite level, easy to walk. From here, you can plunge down any of those little side lanes back to the lakefront. Let's take a stroll down Salita Mella, one of those three main staircase streets pointed out earlier. And here we see at the upper level, rather than a staircase, it's a gentle ramp. You've got cobbles on the sides and a nice flagstones in the middle for very secure footing. With outdoor cafes offering food and wine. And just ahead, a little shopping alcove showcasing the boutique of Perangelo Masadri featuring scarves, ties, accessories with fashion as a vehicle to transmit cultural messages. There are a few more shops scattered along Salita Mella and some private homes and apartments, some of which are available for rent on a short-term basis. And now towards the bottom of Salita Mella, we've got steps. It's become that staircase street and it's still very easy to walk on with excellent cobblestone paving. If we're following my advice, we could turn around and walk back up Salita Mella, gaining that reverse perspective, which we'll do a little bit later. But first we're heading back down to the promenade along the lake and then up the main staircase street. I imagine there are some timid visitors who only stay down here at the lake level along the porticos. They'll take a look up at the staircases and go, oh no, I'm not climbing that. But one of the main reasons to come here is to enjoy these wonderful staircases. When you arrive in Bellagio, the first staircase street you're going to see is the biggest and best of all of them, Salita Serbaloni. If you're only going to walk one staircase, let this be the one. The town's layout is reminiscent of a typical medieval village with steep and irregularly shaped streets that climb up the hillside. But here it's somewhat unique with that lakefront setting and the large number of staircase streets. It makes a great place to just wander and explore. The Lake Como area is famous for silk. Production of silk has a long and storied history in the city of Como located nearby on the other side of the lake. It has been a center of silk production since the early Middle Ages when silk was introduced to Europe via the Silk Road from China. The legend says that silkworms were smuggled out of China and brought to the Eastern Mediterranean by two merchants who were disguised as priests. However, it was not until the 16th century that silk production in Como began to flourish. The Duke of Milan had planted vast amounts of mulberry trees to feed those hungry worms, and there was abundant lake water to help in the processing, making Como the silk capital of Italy and one of the world's major producers. Salita Cervelloni is just 125 meters long, so you'll soon arrive at the top. Good place for pictures and a nice view looking back down the steps. Here we have a typical scene with a wine bar on the left and a restaurant across the street from it. Trattoria San Giacomo perched right at the top of the staircase with a nice view looking out. The restaurant gets good ratings in social media and it's very popular, but they don't take reservations. So you might have to wait a while, maybe over at that wine bar or go in a non-peak time or just pick one of the many other restaurants available. This lady and her dog must be experienced staircase walkers. Otherwise, it could be a bit of a tangle and a trip with that leash. 
As we walk down that same Celita Cerboloni in the opposite direction, we can test my proposal that streets look different when you're returning along that same route. And the passing parade of people is always filled with variety as you walk along. For the devoted shoppers, you might want to walk up and down this same street several times to make sure you didn't miss anything. You might notice the cobblestones are wet after a brief passing shower, but they're not slippery. They're so well made, you'll have great traction even after the rain. With smooth, round surfaces, very comfortable underfoot. You can get to Bellagio on your own by driving or from the city of nearby Como, you could take a boat or a bus. They each take about 45 minutes with a price under 10 euro. Or you could take a one hour train ride from Milan to Varenna on the shores of Lake Como and then a 15 minute ferry ride to Bellagio. As we'll show you in our other video about Varenna. Another beautiful Lake Como village, but much smaller than Bellagio. In our case, we came with my group in a private tour, coming here on a day trip from Milan, with our guide taking us for an orientation walk. What we do now is to make a tour in Bellagio, so follow me and we make the circle. We are right in front of the town now, and now I'm in the lake. Oh no, sorry, I'm no more in the lake. But until a couple of centuries ago, here we had the lake because we are right in front of the portico. You see this long tunnel here? Huh? This is the famous portico of Bellagio. A portico was the, the center of the life of the town. In the portico, the fishermen, they were collecting their boats here, the fishing boats. They were selling the fish to the people. And you know, they were repairing the nets, the boats and everything. So they would spend the whole day here. So the portico has been always the center part of every town, not just of Bellagio. Every single town, every single village we have on our lakes have a portico or had a portico. In many towns now it's disappeared. In Bellagio it's still there, but as you can see now it's full with shops. <laughs> but originally just think maybe they had the, their small rooms where they were living or they had their tools for the fishing and so on. And maybe they had animals. Donkeys were very popular here. And they still had cows until uh, about one century ago. We walked along with our guide from the boat and bus station area into the town. So these are some of the first sights you'll see upon arriving in Bellagio. Rows of shops with a few hotels and restaurants along the waterfront promenade. So as you can see, we have steps, uh, many steps, steps, steps. The people here live on steps, uh, from the cradle to the grave, we say. Yeah? And maybe that's one of the reasons why the people uh, have got this longevity here. Hmm? People live longer. Or maybe because we drink a lot of extra virgin olive oil. We put it everywhere, you know. We came across one of the smaller staircase streets, Salita Grandi. Not many shops on this one, but there's the Hotel Bellagio, a boutique property with 30 rooms, no connection with the giant Hotel Bellagio in Vegas that has 3,500 rooms. And that Vegas property has no resemblance to the town of Bellagio whatsoever. At the end of the promenade, you'll reach the Grand Hotel Villa Cerboloni, one of the most prestigious historic hotels in the area and the only five-star luxury hotel in Bellagio now celebrating 150 years in business. First constructed as a private villa in 1850 and converted to hotel in 1873. Just next to it, you'll find Via Roma, that easier, more gentle way to walk up the hill mentioned earlier, bypassing the staircases and leading up to one of the main piazzas of town, the Piazza della Chiesa with the main church of Bellagio, Basilica di San Giacomo. So in the main square, we have the fountain that was originally the well of the town. Now it's the fountain. You see that it's a church from the 11th century, following this architectural style that's called Romanesque or Romanico in Italian or Spanish. And it's an architectural style that developed and spread everywhere in Europe. Of course, this one has been modified many times during the centuries. So now you may see inside some Baroque elements. 
you will see some side altars. This is a huge church. Why? Because we are in Bellagio. Bellagio in the 11th century was already the most important economic and fishing center on the lake, the most important town on the lake. So that's why they needed a big church. Because of the importance of the church and large size of the open area, this is generally considered the most important piazza in town. With a medieval tower on the other side that was once part of Bellagio's now disappeared defenses. And at the base of the tower is a very popular restaurant. People line up to get in here. The piazza also has a casual cafe and uh, there's a few shops around it. And some vacation rental apartments are also available right here on the piazza. The town's busiest commercial street extends out from here, the Via Giuseppe Garibaldi, extending for 300 meters with shops, cafes, and restaurants along both sides of it. On a path with beautiful cobblestone paving and a level terrain to enjoy a casual stroll. Notice up in front of us, just ahead of that dog, there is a little restaurant called Daiviga Fresh Pasta and a delightful place to have lunch. Homemade noodles with friendly service and an efficient system where you go to the counter and choose from the different types of pasta and sauces. All made fresh this day right in that little kitchen. Place your order, then sit down and they will bring it to you pretty quickly. Mmm, I had the rigatoni bolognese. Still steaming with express service right from the kitchen counter. It's a casual, friendly place, and they also serve wine, beer, or a spritz. You can eat in or take the food away. Open from 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. Another food option right across the street is this deli-type traditional salumeria. There you'll find all sorts of cheeses and cold cuts and beverages to go. Hams, mushrooms, truffles, all in this traditional food store that's been here for more than 50 years. Continuing along Via Garibaldi, also called Il Borgo, as the main street of downtown with numerous stores and boutiques selling local merchandise with apparel and perfumes, food and leather goods. Beware of the tiny cars coming at you on this narrow street. And sometimes you'll notice a little side alley leading into a courtyard with more shops. This same street name, Via Garibaldi, is found in nearly every town in Italy because Giuseppe Garibaldi was the great military leader who unified the country during the Second Italian War of Independence. And in 1859, Garibaldi's troops actually arrived in Bellagio, and at that point, it became part of the Kingdom of Italy. We've reached the effective end of this street, having arrived back at the staircase called Salita Serbaloni, which we've already walked up and down. So at this point, I'm turning around and walking back along the same Via Garibaldi in the opposite direction following those suggestions that I had earlier that the street will look a little bit different when you walk back the same way. And it's so nice, you don't want to just come through here once and that's the end of it. By this point, we have seen most of town and you might be getting a little bit tired after all this walking, like this dog wants to just take a break. But it's an easy glide along this smooth paving and we find ourselves back towards the Piazza della Chiesa. If you wanted the easy route going back down the hill without dealing with a staircase, just keep going through the piazza around that Via Roma where we came up earlier. Or maybe you're still tired, you want another break like this dog. Since we're now on the upper side of town, it should be quite effortless to pick a lane and walk downhill. We're going down Salita Monastero, which has that lovely smooth cobblestone and flagstone paving typical of the town. You'll see it's sometimes a staircase and other times a gentle ramp, depending on the terrain. About halfway down Monastero, there is a cross street called Via Centrale. And this has a few more restaurants and it connects over to the adjacent staircase lanes on both sides called Centrale because it's right in the middle of the town. 
At one end of this little lane, you'll find Hotel Centrale, which dates back to 1922 and was completely restored in 2005 by the same family that founded it. It has 18 elegantly furnished guest rooms and a breakfast room and a small garden. Via Centrale does make a few zigzags as it cuts across town and it actually connects seven of those staircase streets that run perpendicular to it. The green line shows the route that you could take if you really wanted to walk every one of those staircase streets up, down, and around in a complete exploration of Bellagio. Now we're continuing our walk down Salita Monastero, and then we've got one more hill to climb, up Salita Mella. These have to be some of the nicest outdoor staircases you've ever seen. They are so well made and easy to walk on. There are no elevators in town and no escalators, so it's all muscle power. You walk up and down. It's the challenge and the fun. It's a good feeling when you see the bottom of the staircase is not far away. You're almost back down to ground level. Some people looking up wondering if they should make the climb. Go for it. Connecting through the porticos to get to our final staircase climb up Salita Mella, which we saw briefly earlier. Now we'll climb it to the top. As we walk along, I'm going to share with you a brief summary of the history of the area to put everything in context. It's such a beautiful place that it's believed that humans have lived here from as far back as the Paleolithic 30,000 years ago. But the first known human settlement was about 500 BC. A Celtic tribe, perhaps living in huts held up on stilts over the lake, as was common in this northern Italy lake district. Next came the Gauls, and by 200 BC the territory was occupied by the Romans and then fully absorbed as a Roman province in the year 80 BC. They brought thousands of fellow Romans to colonize the area, which became a mixture of races and cultures. They introduced many Mediterranean food crops, including the olive and chestnut, and planted cypress tree forests. After the Romans, the barbarians invaded and after that, the Lombards came in, settling in what is now Lombardy. Following them, the Franks arrived in the year 773. We've made it to the top of Salitamella at Via Garibaldi. And now we're going back down to the promenade and st stroll through the porticos to finish up our quick history. Because of Lake Como's strategic location in the north of Italy, near France, Germany, and Austria, it was a place of contention that was fought over for many centuries, including invasion and domination from the nearby city of Como. Then Milan took over in the 13th century, and during the 16th century, the Spanish took control and dominated for more than a hundred years. Then came the brief rule of Napoleon, and years later, the arrival of Garibaldi to unite Bellagio with the Kingdom of Italy in 1859. Throughout these centuries, Bellagio's culture and economy actually thrived, with its ideal location giving it a military and strategic importance. And various industries flourished, notably candle making and silk weaving. The romantic discovery of landscape was changing how the Italian lakes were seen. Stendhal wrote, The sky is pure, the air mild, a land beloved of the gods. I lift my gaze to the most beautiful view in the world. In the early 19th century, the noble families of Milan began constructing elegant villas and gardens. Luxury shops opened in the village and tourists began arriving. The golden age of tourism had begun. Bellagio Hotel was the first to open in 1825, and several more splendid hotels sprang up in a short time, many of which are still open today run by the founding families, such as Hotel du Lac, Hotel de la Grande Bretagne, and that Grand Hotel Villa Serboloni. Today, there are more than a dozen hotels operating here and many more vacation rentals. 
Our visit to Bellagio is coming to an end. It's time to get on board and continue our journey. We're going to be crossing Lake Como, heading over to Verena in another video. These ferry boats are a wonderful way to get around the lake and not expensive. It's so easy to travel this way. You can purchase your ticket right on the dock before departure. You'll have a grand view looking back at the town with that sweet sorrow of departing knowing that you have experienced such an incredibly magical and wonderful place. There is nothing exactly like Bellagio in the entire world. We'll share more explorations of the Italian lakes in our other videos. Be sure to tune in. We frequently upload new movies, so please subscribe to our channel and click that little alarm bell so you'll be notified. And if you enjoyed the movie, how about a thumbs up and we always welcome comments down below. Or if you have questions about the destination, make note and we'll answer them. Thanks for watching.